On to our next story. The protests in Hong Kong have been going on for 12 weeks now. Now, secondary school students have gathered at Edinburgh, Edinburgh Place and they are holding a rally demanding for reforms amid the political turmoil in the city. Yesterday, thousands of protesters held a sit-in at a subway station that was attacked last month by a mob. The rally marked the one-month anniversary of the attack. On the 21st of July, more than 100 white-shirted men had stormed the Yuen Long Station, hours after protesters marched through central Hong Kong. The mob used pipes and clubs to attack protesters, passers-by and journalists. About 45 people were wounded in the violence. The protesters have expressed anger that nobody has been prosecuted for the violence yet. Now, the, pro the protesters eventually clashed with the police. They sprayed fire extinguishers and some spilled oil on the floor to stop the police from approaching them. Some demonstrators blocked station exits and sealed roads outside the station. They also aimed green laser beams at the lines of shield-bearing police officers. Now, meanwhile, a small group of protesters sat inside the station quietly. The unrest in Hong Kong, which began as a protest against an extradition bill, has now morphed into one of the biggest crises Chinese President Xi Jinping has faced since he took power in 2012. Now, what are the demands uh, of the protesters? The main demands were originally released in July, a day after a small group of protesters stormed the Hong Kong legislature. The demands include a full withdrawal of a proposed bill that would allow Hong Kong people to be extradited to mainland China. A retraction of charges against anti-extradition protesters. A retraction of any characterization of the movement as a riot. An independent committee to investigate the Hong Kong police's use of force. And universal suffrage in elections for the city's chief executive officer and legislature by 2020. The United States' latest cruise missile test has raised concerns in Russia, China and North Korea. Russia and China have asked the United Nations Security Council to meet over a threat to international peace and security. The two nations want to convene the 15-member council after the U.S. announced plans to develop medium-range missiles. On Sunday, the United States tested a conventionally configured cruise missile that hit its target after more than 500 kilometers of flight. This was its first such test since it pulled out of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty earlier this month. It ha had the treaty still been in place, this test would have been banned under it. Now, Russian President Vladimir Putin has accused the U.S. of working on the missiles even before it pulled out of the treaty. Putin was speaking during his visit to Helsinki. Now, here's what he had to say. В этой связи у нас есть все основания полагать, что работа над этой ракетой, над ее приземлением, это морская ракета, началась задолго до того, как поиск поводов для выхода из... Putin also said that the test raised threats to Russia and hence it might warrant a retaliation. He also said that the U.S. was now in a position to deploy missiles from Europe just by changing the software of launch systems in Romania and Poland. But the U.S. has said that it has no such plans. Meanwhile, the Chinese foreign ministry said that the U.S. was stoking a new arms race. It said that this could have a negative impact on global security. North Korea has also responded to the tests. Pyongyang has said that it's not interested in any dialogue with Washington unless it stops escalating hostile military moves. The country fears that the U.S. missile test could trigger a new Cold War in the region. Remember, North Korea has carried out at least six short-range missile tests in recent weeks. Now, talks between the U.S. and North Korea have been due since their leaders met in June and agreed to restart dialogue on ridding the Korean peninsula of nu nuclear weapons.
Schön, okay, erst nie da.